Hello and welcome to another episode of Cello 101. Uh, today we are going to be covering 15, Happy Farmer by Schumann. So this one is going to be uh, definitely something more along the lines of something that you would play for people as opposed to uh, the etude number 14, which is just kind of a work piece. Um, this one is a nice little tune, has the same kind of repeating idea, not necessarily um, the exact same figures repeating throughout, uh, but it has some nice tonal elements to it, um, some of the chord structure is a lot of fun, and some of the things that it outlines changes in subtle but fun ways kind of throughout. So, starting at the beginning, um, I will go ahead and play through this once, just so that you can hear what it's like, and then we can go through and kind of break it down. Um, overall, the structure of this, this one isn't terribly complex, but it is something to kind of pay attention for. So, starting at the beginning, a pickup, um, which is a nod full measure um, at the very beginning, that'll be that single eighth note uh, that kind of gets you into the piece, and then uh, we've got some dotted rhythms, um, and then it changing into eighth note dotted rhythms, and then we have a rest at the end, tail end of measure four, not the end end of measure four, um, that leaves us with enough room for a pickup into measure five. So let's go ahead and play that first line, measures one through most of four, um, just so we can get that, that idea down and kind of take a look at it. So we will play it a little bit slower this time, uh, just so that we can kind of dissect it and work on, work on things. So, um, one, so this one, the, it'll be two and three and, and we come in on uh, two and three and four, and then we start playing. Um, so it'll be two and a half measures uh, to come in, and then we can get from there. So, two and three and four. <laughs> So the counting again, as starting with the uh, starting in the middle of measures in measure fourteen or in number fourteen, uh, gets a little dicey. Um, but with practice, coming in is a lot easier. So uh, we do have some. Well, actually, we have a lot of marking notes here. Um, we have staccatos on the tail notes in the the slurred phrases. Uh, we have staccato and tenuto markings. Um, in measure two, we have staccato and tenuto markings in measure three, and then measure four just kind of runs as it does until you get to the pickup. Um, so that one's kind of an interesting one. It's supposed to be played full value, but um, it is supposed to be accented a little bit. Um, <clears throat> I usually give them a little bit more punch, um, but try to make sure that I play the entire uh, duration value of the given note. So, let's go ahead and do that one more time, just to play with a little bit. Um, <clears throat> and we will come in on the and of four, and starting at two. So it'll be two and three and four start. Two and three and four start. Um, <clears throat> so, let's go ahead and hop right into there, and we'll do measure one through four, and then we can move on a little bit. So, two and three and four. <laughs> slurred um, figure, um, the same ascending eighth note figure, and then we have a s the exact same figure going into uh, 
measure measure eight. Um, so let's go ahead and do that one more time. That'll give us, or let's go ahead and start uh, the pickup to measure five, and that's basically the exact same thing that we just played. Repeating the same uh, repeating the same figure is a definitely a way to help set it in your audience's mind if you are uh, of a music writing bent, and. <clears throat> It is a good way to to help establish a given idea before you kind of start messing with it and changing things. So, pick up to measure five. It'll be the exact same count: two and three and four, two and three and four, um, and then we'll just play through the exact same thing. So, do 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 do. Two and three and four. <laughs> One more time, just so we can definitely get that cemented under our fingers and in our minds. So let's play that one more time, just so we can get that uh, under our fingers and cemented in our minds. So, pardon me, uh, two and three and four. <laughs> This next section is going to be different, so this is going to be something that'll take a little bit more work. Um, we have a slurred section, a descending figure instead of an ascending figure, and then we have another slurred section that is uh, basically what we had played before. So they're kind of changing things, um, changing things in such a way to make them slightly different from what we can recognize by ear at this point in the piece, and then. Um, going back to what we remember, or to, to what we had just played. So it'll be two measures of something different, and then two measures of what we had played before. So, measure 9 through 12, we will go ahead and play now. Well, pick up to 9, I apologize. So it'll still be that uh, 2 and 3 and 4 um, to get us that pick up note so that we can come in. So, 2 and 3 and 4. Two measures of the, and then we had the two measures that we have been playing so far. Um, going back to the the first idea that we had. So uh, let's go ahead and do that one more time, starting with the pickup to measure nine. So two and three and four. into something different here. Uh, at measure 13, it'll be... Um, so this is where that outlining a chord kind of figure uh, comes back into play, and also partly why we were working on string crossings in number 14, uh, because there's a lot of them here. We have... So let's go ahead and do that short chunk there, pick up to 13 and then 14, because that is slightly different. Um, and then we can move on a little bit. So pick up to 13 through measure 14. And then this will be the same kind of count off, two and three and four. So, uh, ready? Two and three and four. <laughs> because this is basically the initial idea, the initial element uh, that's kind of been chopped up a little bit here, uh, because we had a little bit of something different uh, added earlier. So let's go ahead and do that one more time. Uh, pick up to 13 through 14. Two and three and four. <laughs> We should be able to play uh, measures 15, or pick up to 15 through the end, uh, because this is all stuff that we've seen before, um, literally repeated note for note as best I can tell at a glance, um, except for the last two notes, uh, because it gives us a resolution as opposed to in measure 4, uh, where it kind of gives us a pause and then it, is, it feels like it needs to go on. Uh, in the last measure, it definitely gives us a uh, 
it gives us more of a cadence um, so that it feels like it's the end because it's, well, the end. <clears throat> so, uh, 13, 14, so pick up to measure 15 to the end um, and we will go ahead and get the last of this out of the way so we can start kind of putting everything together. So this will be the pickup again, so it'll be 2 and 3 and 4, and then we will go from there. Granted, I need to slow down a little bit because it's speeding up in my head, which is also something to pay attention to. Um, this is an example of using, uh, where using a metronome would be very, very handy. Um, so let's go ahead and do the pickup to 15, and then I need to slow down a little bit. Da, 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 da. Yeah, so 2 and 3 and 4. <laughs> finishing with the old with a slight twist. Um, again, if you are of a music writing bent, introducing brand new material at the very end can work, but usually in the style of the older composers, um, the, the, you, you, start with, you start with something which is obviously new, you change it a little bit into something that's new new, and then you go back to the what you first initially did and then at the very end or towards the end, you might put a little bit of a twist, not making it something completely new. So it wouldn't be an A, B, C format, but it would be like an A, B, A version 2.0 kind of a deal. Um, <clears throat> so that's kind of what we've done here. Well, this is kind of what Schumann has done here. We, we haven't written anything. Um, and it, uh, it definitely makes for a, a nice, flowing, engaging song um, that gives you just enough that you can kind of predict what's coming, but with enough of a twist that it keeps you active and engaged in listening. So, a little bit of theory aside there, but uh, let's go ahead and hop back into the music. Uh, so we'll do a pickup into 15 to the end, and then we can kind of recap and go from there. So, uh, pick up to 15. <clears throat> so, uh, same pickup, so it'll be 2 and 3 and 4, and then we can go from there. So, two and three and four. <laughs> Let's go ahead and do that one more time. Um, something that just kind of occurred to me, because it's not written in, um, but something that usually is kind of encouraged, especially in a solo piece like this, is as the notes get higher, especially towards the end, um, basically trying to make the volume match the curve of the music. Um, so as the notes get higher, you can get a little bit louder, and as the notes get lower, you get a little bit quieter. Um, in this instance, for sure. Um, and it just kind of helps give... You, you, you want the... Because the highest note in the piece uh, is a C above the staff. And so those should get a little bit more emphasis, uh, at least in my mind, they should get a little bit more emphasis than um, the normal everything in the middle of the staff. Um, the lower notes usually get a little bit more of an accent in, in this kind of an instance as well, because you've got everything's kind of in between. Um, Everything's kind of in between here. Uh, it's kind of in that range. And anything that goes outside that can use a little bit more emphasis, a little bit more focus, and it just kind of helps lend a little bit of uh, a little bit of shape, a little bit of character to the music outside of just playing interesting notes. Uh, because it is truly a, a combination of notes uh, of notational uh, variance in flavor and also um, volume and accent uh, variation in flavor that really does make a good performance of a piece. So, as my second aside has now rambled to a close, let's go ahead and do pick up to 15 to the end and then we can roll everything together because this one is an allegro piece. So, <clears throat> pick up to 15 with that 2 and 3 and 4 start. Uh, we will go ahead and go from there. Make sure you start to pick up note with an up bow. It'll make everything else flow very, very nicely. So, two and three and four. <laughs> So, 
now that we have gotten through the end of the piece, let's go ahead and tie everything together. We don't have much in the way of um, written um, dynamic differences, but with a little bit of flavor in there, not going too wild with it, you can really, really uh, help make this song kind of stand out a little bit more. So let's go ahead and play it from the beginning to the end. Um, and then we can kind of work on making those high notes come out a little bit more and making the low notes come out a little bit more. <clears throat> so starting at the beginning, keeping the same tempo. Two and three and dun, dun, dun. Yeah, let's go ahead and run it from the beginning. Two and three and four. <laughs> see with a little bit of flavor a little bit of dynamic contrast there uh, you can really help make the uh, make the piece stand out so let's go ahead and do that one more time but just a smidge faster and then we can go ahead and call it good for today <clears throat> so let's go ahead and start that with a little bit faster tempo yeah that should be good so uh, go ahead and starting on that pickup Two and three and four. <laughs> this week um, and then from there we will uh, we will meet again soon thank you very much for your time and uh, yeah I will catch you soon y'all take care